All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. We are here in the studio. Been a while since we came down this way. Um, things been going on here, working on stuff. And so now we're back here live. <laughs> we are definitely live this time around here in the studio. We have Abdu Manat. That's so, close enough, brother, okay. but I, I was, it's Undar. Un Undar, okay, yes, okay, all right. I, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good, my brother. But um, Sharon got a hold of me. Yes, sir. And I met her a while back, and I re-met her again. Mm -hmm. We were out at a, a restaurant. I was doing a live show there, and she gave me this flyer right here. Yes, sir. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, She said, I've been listening to you every morning, Ron. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that <laughs> and stuff. And she said, well, we got an event going on. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, give me the flyer, and I'll make sure I, I talk about it all the time. Yes, sir. And she turned around, and she gave the flyer, and she got back on the, um, um, on the radio when I was there, and she mm -hmm. posted post the event every time on the page. Mm -hmm. And I liked that, except she forgot one time. <laughs> I tell say, Sharon, can you post that link again? And she did, it popped right up, you know, to get everybody out there to know because I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. I did not realize y'all do this every Saturday. Yes, sir. We have a what we call first we have a my bookstore and more. And part of my bookstore and more is that we have a buy black Saturday and we do it every Saturday from twelve to four at thirty four fifty five Martin Luther King Drive. So we've been doing that about a year and a half now. You know, it, it started off once a month. We went to twice a month, and now we're every Saturday. Man. And, and I looked at it, and I said, so I'm going to make plans. I got something Saturday morning to do. I'm finished at 12. Okay. I'm going to pack my stuff up. I'm going to come over there and make a appearance, say hi to everybody. I got something else to do later on. It's just, it's just busy. But I really wanted to get you on so you talk about this because – I'm looking on here. What I like about it, um, you um, educating people. Yes, sir. You know, and that's part of our mission. Is uh, of course, you know, we always talk about we sell books, and our book focus for our books is around Black history for children and adults. But mm -hmm. we offer much more than that because at the market, of course, you come in, you may purchase products and, and may talk to people about their services they offer. And it's really trying to focus on African-American businesses here in San Antonio and the surrounding area. But the other aspect is that it's part, as you were saying, educational because we want to let people know about, of course, our history here in San Antonio as a people. And I don't know if you're familiar with the fact that, you know, I was just talking to Mr. Williams, but he's in our film. Uh, walk on the River, A Black History of the Alamo yeah. City. So we want to share with the history of blacks in San Antonio, but also the national and international history. So we have drumming class. We have, uh, you know, history classes. We talk about health, holistic health, and we do other things. But the main thing is that we wanted to create a space where we could come together and, uh, and have these kind of, you know, dialogues and share this kind of information. And, and you said it right, have a space to come together because um, this station is a platform for yes. this community. And I am out doing things, talking about things, but I can only talk about information that I get. That's right. Yeah. And, and, if I, and I always put it out, send me something. You, know, you could text mm -hmm. me, go to the website, send me something because I am sick and tired and sick and tired of people on Monday. I didn't know that was going on. We hear about we hear that so often, and of course I'm one of those people that you know somebody called me and say, well you know I went to this event this past weekend. I say, How? well I didn't even know about that. I didn't know that was going on. Yeah. But the idea is that we need a we need a central, uh, I guess group or, or location or just a network where we can come and say this is the place you can get the information about things that are going on within our community. So I appreciate what you're doing here, brother. I really do. And, and I always reach out to um, Vincent Webb and I reach out to Keith Scott at, at KROV yeah. because we're all in this together. That's right. They let me know something. I let them know something. We're always communicating, getting the word out. Yeah. So that's three, three platforms right there in the black community that we let everybody know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, But we still get them stragglers, no matter what, that say, I didn't know what's going on. Nobody told me anything. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we can't force feed it to you. No, and the point about that is that, you know, we have to be looking also. Yeah. 
but we have to know where to go to find information. So as long as we continue to blow that horn, let people know we can come here to WSAN or we can go to KROV or wherever we want need to go, we can yeah. get that information. But on the other end, we have to be looking. Right. It's just like um, it was a joke years ago about this guy who was on top of the roof and he prayed and um, he needed some help. So he didn't make it. So when he got up to the pearly gates, he said, um, on God, I, I, I pray for everything. He said, yeah, I seen you two boats in a helicopter. <laughs> you know, so the, so the moral of the story, it's not going to fall yeah. in front of you. That's you right. You have to look for it. Yes. You know, and that's the thing I found about, uh, I came to San Antonio in 1988. I was in the military. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things I did in coming here to the city, I wanted to find out where was the African-American community. Now, I came to the east side of San Antonio because that's where I was pointed to. And I met some amazing people, got involved in the community. But on the other hand, in hand excuse me, there were people on the base that did not know anything about San Antonio community. Yeah. Because I'm one of those people, I say, we got to go find it. It's out there. We yeah. just got to go looking for it. So, you know, I, I encourage people to, you know, to look, but to know where to go to get the information. And that's what we got to make that connection for our community. Yeah, and there's a um, um, sage. Yes. Um, I, I belong with them. Mm -hmm. And um, they always send me information that's going on in the community and, mm -hmm. and everything. And um, I'm a firm believer at I will go ahead if I have to force it on you. This is what's going on. This is what's happening. For instance, mm -hmm. I turned around this year for District 2. Mm -hmm. I went out there and I played my music to help out for the turkey giveaway. They gave mm -hmm. away 300 turkeys. Um, Reverend Robinson, I think 600 turkeys at the Barbara Jordan Center. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Horizon and more, and we gave out over 800 turkeys. Mm -hmm. And and I put the word out. I put the word out on all those events and everything. But I still get people coming back saying, "So when is that turkey giveaway? It's, it's over with now." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're getting out there. We're yes. getting the word out there. But the, the deal is like, how much more we need to do? Yes. To make sure the word is out there. Yeah. But I think it, it also falls on all of us. It's a responsibility like you, like yourself. I make a point. If I know something is going on, I'm going to blow that horn and let people know. When people come by the market, we have flyers from other events there. And mm -hmm. we encourage people, look here, this is going on. This is coming up. Like uh, Sister Ada Babinoff, who uh, sponsors and coordinates the San Antonio Black International Film Festival. Well, she has her flyers there for the year and then when we have the book festival or we have other events in the community bring your flyers by because we're going to share the information because we want to make sure that our community is aware of upcoming events so you know it won't be because you didn't know it just you know you chose <laughs> you had something else to do well which means i need to bring my flyers over there too because yes. um once a month i'm at ball hogs barbecue okay. and i do karaoke for the youth and anybody want to come in I've been doing that going on six months. I do the I do the first um, mm -hmm. Saturday of mm -hmm. each month there. Okay. And and, and I want to recognize the youth there. Mm -hmm. and, and when they show up, I say, "You gonna sing?" No, I'm not gonna sing. Then later on, they see everything going. Okay, I'll sign up. I'll sing. But that's you know, good. that's my way to give back to the community too, yeah, to let beautiful. them know that we're here. And all mm -hmm. that um, Hubert Brown wants is everybody drop off flyers, show up, do this, do that, and that's all we're looking for yes. because. Networking doesn't mean you, we have to be face to face. That's right. It could That's be right. anywhere. You, there's a flyer. Oh, I didn't know this was going on. And then that one person will spread that for each to meet for each person mm -hmm. that uh, picks up a flyer. They're telling 10 other people. That's right. And that's, and right. that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, we have the saying that each one must teach one. So whatever you know, I find out, so when I've, I've come across some information, I have a responsibility to share it with someone else. And if we take that approach in our mm -hmm. community, then we're going to continue to, because the best advertisement is really word of mouth. Right. You know, we can put some flyers in people's hands. Of course, that's really word of mouth. Mm -hmm. We're sharing what we have come across, our information we have. And I think what we got to be able to do is start to beat that drum again because I know social media has been a great asset. It really has right. when used in the right way. Right. But the idea is that uh, the word of mouth is still the most effective way. 
If we know something, tell someone. If we can have some information, share it with someone else and continue yeah. to beat that drum. Okay, I'm gonna fall back on your bookstore. Yes, sir. Um, unique. You got things in there for everybody to read. Yes, sir. What do you think about this book banning that they're doing right now? Because my personal opinion is they're trying to squash history. That's right. The only way we're going to learn and evolve is find out what our ancestors has done, mm -hmm. what sacrifices that they made mm -hmm. for where we are right now. But some of the kids don't know anything about that. Then when you talk to them about it, with them not being educated first, and they say, I don't want to know about that old stuff. You know, this is an ongoing struggle. And I remind people, you know, we're at a stage now we're talking about book banning. See, that was a time where we were denied even opportunity to learn to read and write. See, that's where we are book banning too. Yeah. And the idea is that that was a time when books were written where we were denied information about ourselves in those books. That's part of our denying of our story. Now we're reaching a point where we have so many scholars and activists who have documented our story, put it in the books, put it in the curriculum, but now there's a movement to what? Put those books away. So, yeah. you know, I'm saying that basically the struggle continues and I think it's our responsibility is to take these books they're talking about banning and make sure that we make people wear these books. But more importantly, make sure that we start reading these books. Yes. Because sometimes these books can be in the library. They could be sometimes in our homes. But if we're not picking them up, reading the information, it's like we're banning ourselves from reading the books. Amen. So that. it goes both ways. But we're in a stage, in our, I think, in the struggle of us as a people is that we need to understand that this is an ongoing struggle and we have to make sure that we do our part to make, to make progress, meaning that if someone's gonna ban a book, we need to make sure we know about that book. And there's a lot of books out there that uh, we have in our bookstore that people are not even aware of. I mean, books on our history, books written by great scholars and activists from our history. And we need to know about those books because many times we're walking around and we talk about book banning, we have banned ourselves from the knowledge. Right. So I think the, the thing that we really need to be focused on now, be aware of the book banning and why it's going on because there's a denial of our history. And the important thing is if once we know our history, we'll know the greatness of things that we have, the greatness of us as a people. And I think that's part of the book banning movement and has been for a long time yeah. but we can overcome that if we take responsibility to start picking up those books finding those books and reading those books oh i remember um being in book clubs yes and we all would get one book and we would read it and what's unique about that in the book club mm -hmm. we are all brought up in different parts of yeah. the country we all have different intakes or takes on the book mm -hmm. and it goes by how you was brought up where you was brought up the demographics falls into place right there mm -hmm. but at the end of the day you all come to the same conclusion yes yes and i think that's the power you know you just reminded me of something because i was part of a book club and we of course we are still trying to build a book club at our bookstore at my bookstore and more but the idea is that when we sit down and we read books together it becomes so powerful because so much information that we bring to the st uh, story in the books that we can read the same passage but because you grew up in a certain area of the united states and i grew up in a certain area we may come with different perspectives but we grow from listening and talking to each other about this one passage or this one page or this one book and I think we need more of that because that was at one time was one of the great things that was really raising up the consciousness of the African-American community were book clubs. Yeah, and we were actually reading. Yes. <laughs> reading the books. I remember growing up as, as a kid, um, I didn't understand my mom taking us to all the places in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I truly understood it later on in life. Yes. She wanted to introduce us to all type of cultures, not only our own, but everyone. And see, when she did that, she said, if you have a conversation with somebody, I want you to have a conversation. 
I don't want you to sit back in the back and look like you're embarrassed. You don't know what's going That's on. Right. You need to know what's going on, not with your culture, but all cultures. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the number one problem is with our culture. Mm -hmm. And this, I'm going to say it, y'all, don't get mad at me, is people don't take the time out to understand our black culture. They're too busy telling us what to do, but don't know what we're doing. And that's well said, brother, because when you just said that, it just made me realize the true, one of the true values of books and reading is that we can go back through history, we can travel to different countries, we can have different experiences just by reading through those books. But then when we come to have a conversation, we can be more involved and engaged mm -hmm. in those conversations because it's based on information that we have received from reading these books. And we have a powerful story to tell and that we must bring our story to the table. So when we come together as a, a multicultural nation, we must bring our story to the table and tell people, this is what we have done and this is what we are doing. But we can't do that if we're not getting the information, reading the books, getting the knowledge. Yeah. So we many times we're sitting back, letting everyone else talk about, you know, their accomplishments, their greatness, and we feel left out because we haven't picked up the books, we haven't read, got the information, and we're not able to tell our story and express what we have done. Amen to that, because um, you just, you trigger, uh, my memory is being triggered all over again. <laughs> Sitting back doing that, because I remember it was a time that um, I would pick up a book, mm -hmm. and I got turned on to Terry McMullen years ago. And I picked up one of the books, uh, Mamas. That's what it was. And I started reading it on Wednesday evening. I was finished by Thursday afternoon. Wow. I couldn't put that book down because I wanted to know what was coming up next, what's going on next. Mm -hmm. So the beauty in reading a book is getting involved in it. Sit back and really read it and understand. Don't read a couple of, oh, this doesn't make any sense. Well, mm -hmm. it's a book. It's building up. That's right. That's right. And it's it's a t it's Books takes us on a journey. Mm -hmm. When we read these books, we travel. And I'm saying we travel through time. We have experiences. And many times, you know, and I know you probably have experienced this. You read a book, you know, today. Now you come back a month later and you read that book again. It's a, in some ways, it's a new experience because it's some things that you have learned through your own, you know, excuse me just your own experience but now mm -hmm. you bring that to the book and you be like oh now i have a better understanding of what this means to me and what they were saying in this book and i think you know we have some uh, some amazing authors who have you know have written you know one of the books that have definitely had a tremendous impact on me has been alex haley book the autobiography of malcolm x yes and for african-american men I definitely think that should be required reading for us just to read through that book and get an experience through the life of Malcolm X. But in that book, I found a lot of my own life experiences mm -hmm. in that book. And it, bring, it raised up my consciousness and awareness of, look here, Malcolm transformed, therefore I can transform, I can change, I could become better. And I think that's what I took from that book was that the need for us to transform, but we have that power to transform. But what does it take to transform? One thing is what? Being exposed to information, knowledge, and awareness of the world we live in. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, we now if I go back and read that book right now, mm -hmm. I would probably have a whole nother experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's one, one thing I want, um, besides books, mm -hmm. reading, there's a lot of experience you can have with your grandparents and all that. Cause I read a quote one time that made a lot of sense. Listen to your grandparents now before they become ancestors. That's right. Brother, that is so profound. You know, we do, uh, we, we did the film, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. On that film, Walk on the River, Black History of the Alamo City, we interviewed about 25 of our elders here in the city of San Antonio, including Mr. Williams. It was amazing the stories they was able to tell us from their own in personal life experiences, but as a collective. But many times now we do a tour, a black history tour of San Antonio bus tour, and we point out to those on the bus, 
as we pass the grave site, the graveyard, there are many stories out there that will never be told because those people have passed on now. It is so critical, so important that we sit with our elders and listen to them tell us the stories of their life experiences to help us to learn and put us on a greater path to achieving great things. Because many times, you know, the elders will sit and tell you the truth of their yeah. struggles, their, their success, their challenges, and all of that. And we should be able to take lessons from our elders and apply them to our own lives. So maybe there's a few hurdles we can get up past, you know, without tripping and falling. But the idea is that we have to sit down and talk with our elders. Yes. And, and, and in the film, I, I'm so, I always tell people I was so honored to be there and sit in the presence of these amazing people here in San Antonio tell this amazing story. Yeah, I, you know, you, you're talking about elders. I remember mm -hmm. one time, I never went to this family reunion at all. We went to the family reunion on my grandmother's side of the family. Mm -hmm. It was in Arkansas, Toilette, Arkansas. <laughs> I remember that vividly. There was a young man there, an elderly man there, that had a Bible. Mm -hmm. Had every birth, every death, who family was what. Because people got to realize, back in the days, the Bible mm -hmm. had everything in there. Mm -hmm. And they, if, if somebody was liking somebody else, they'd go to this young man, oh no, you cousin with that person right there. Mm -hmm. You know, everything was in that Bible. And I, I don't know where it is right now, but I tell you what, that is a movie by itself. You run across somebody that has a Bible like that, mm -hmm. that's a history all the way back to slavery was in that Bible. You know, and that's amazing because it made me realize that, uh, you know, my, my grandmother, she's passed now. But she would write in the Bible. And if we wanted to know our birthdays, we wanted to know our cousins, our family members, we would go to that Bible and yeah. you could see the names, the birthdays, at least had that information. And I think now that I, we're having this conversation, who is doing that for us? Right. You know what I'm saying? Where are we documenting that information about our connection to our family members? You know, and I, and I think it's very important that we get back to some of those maybe forgotten traditions of mm -hmm. being able to at least have a source that we could go to, such as the Bible, with the information written in the book so we can continue to pass that on, you know, from generation to generation. Yeah, I remember before my mom passed, um, she had me sign up for Ancestry or something like that mm -hmm. online. And I did it and I found 95% of my relatives, even one who passed already, mm -hmm. is in there. It's, like this, it's just the family tree, let's call it what it is, the family tree. Yeah. And I was amazed on that. Mm -hmm. And what I do is every once in a while, well, a lot of times now, I got a big family, I get an email saying who birthday it is. Yes. You know, it's constantly reminding me. So I'm not saying that take the place of handwritten stuff down, but sometimes mm -hmm. you need to have that at your fingertip right there. Because cause, um, Big Mama, that was my great-great-grandmother, Big Mama. Things was around her. When she passed away, my grandmother took over everything. You know, mm -hmm. as a family reunion, Christmas and all that, my grandmother passed away, my mom took over all that. Mm -hmm. And was just passed on. And my mom passed away. Nobody took it over that I know of. I mean, yes. they do get together for reunions and stuff, but it's not like it used to be. No, no. And I think that's one of those traditions that we're going to have to recapture, reclaim, and to move forward. Because those, uh, the gathering of us as a people is, has always been important. You know, and I know we're going to talk about Kwanzaa, but that's the idea is that we have to continue to have gathering of us as a people. Even when we was talking earlier about just having events in our community, it's all about us coming together, having conversations, sometimes just smiling at each other, handshaking, greeting each other, getting to know each other, introducing ourselves yeah. to each other, and having conversations about things that are important to us. And I think, you know, when we go back traditionally, that has always been a part of keeping our community together, the gathering of us, the coming together of us as a people.
Yeah, and you brought up Kwanzaa, and you, you're good because I was going to segue into that. <laughs> I remember when Kwanzaa first came up in our household, um, everybody was curious, wanted to know why. And my mom is a firm believer, read it, look it up and read it. Mm -hmm. She also told us, if you use a big word, you better know what it stands for and understand it. That's right. So when she turned around and um, um, I noticed that one year that all the Christmas lights and all this stuff were coming down, no more you take it down. And she said, no, we're celebrating Kwanzaa. And the daishikis came out and all <laughs> the African wear and, and all that. So we had to sit down and study it. Beautiful. You know, mom made sure that we knew, once again, the culture. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that's what we did. So y'all have it coming up. Is it tomorrow? Well, we have the Kwanzaa Market Festival. It's okay. the 14th annual Kwanzaa Market Festival. Wow. And the reason that we do it at this day, because, you know, the Kwanzaa celebration begins December the 26th, go through January the 1st. Mm -hmm. But we have the Kwanzaa Market Festival for two main reasons. One is to introduce people to the celebration of Kwanzaa. Many of us are still unaware and we don't have we lack in knowledge. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we at least have the knowledge of this great and amazing celebration. Mm -hmm. First celebrated in 1966. Now. 57 years later, and imagine this. In 1966, Dr. Marlana Karinga, who is the creator of Kwanzaa, with the US organization and a small group of people in Los Angeles, California, first celebrated Kwanzaa. Today, there are estimated over 15 million people celebrate Kwanzaa on every continent on the earth. Mm. And on the first day of Kwanzaa, December the 26th, everyone is talking about the same principle, the principle of unity. Now imagine 15 million people around the world talking about the idea of us unifying, coming together and how we can unite. Now, so the Kwanzaa Market Festival is first designed to introduce us to the celebration of Kwanzaa, educate us, make us aware. But then there's two principles within the Kwanzaa celebration that we really emphasize. One is unity, coming together as a people, the other one is cooperative economics, and that is to share our resources. Now, at the Kwanzaa Market Festival, we have African-American vendors, business people, sharing information. Uh, you can buy their products. You can support these businesses. You can become aware of them, and if you can't do something with them that day, then sometime in the near future, you can support them. So yeah. it's an opportunity for us to build on cooperative economics, to share our resources. Now, I always make this point. It's because one thing is to share monetary resources, and it's, ex and it's an exchange of money. And that's good, and that's great for us, building an economic base in our community. But the other thing is that it's a sharing of information. Yeah. It's a sharing of, you know, just ideas within our community. So many times, people may come there, and they don't necessarily buy anything or buy a lot, but the idea is that they meet people and they talk to people and they share information. And that's really is the foundation of building a strong economic base is that we have ideas and we must share those ideas and then we come to materialize those ideas with the resources. So the Kwanzaa Market Festival is, of course, uh, is gonna be this Saturday or tomorrow. And uh, the event takes place at 3455 Martin Luther King Drive. The time frame is from 12 to five. And of course, we're gonna have a food vendor, uh, some Jamaican food out there. We're gonna have vendors, of course, selling African wares, uh, cause you mentioned dashikis. We have some yeah. dashikis there. <laughs> we're gonna have books. We're gonna have children activities. We're gonna have some giveaways, but we're gonna have just an amu amazing community event. And that's the idea with the Kwanzaa Market Festival. Now we, did, we started this, like I say, 14 years ago. This will be 14 years uh, Saturday. And since that time, it has grown. And then, of course, with COVID, everything kind of, you know, yeah. reduced. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that we're looking to continue to grow it, you know. And I think as more people come into the celebration of Kwanzaa, become aware of it, I think they're going to see the value in it, you know. Because Kwanzaa many times, and I'm quite sure you're probably aware of this, because, and I love what you said your mother made you do. <laughs> made the family do and that is to learn about right. because I think we should learn about everything that we celebrate 
I mean, when we celebrate Dr. King, we should know about Dr. King. Right. You know, when we celebrate Juneteenth, we should know about Juneteenth. So when we celebrate Kwanzaa, we should know about Kwanzaa. And Kwanzaa is centered around, of course, you know, seven basic principles, and that's unity, self-determination, collective work responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. These are the seven principles. It's a seven-day celebration. And each day you are reflecting on one of these principles. The idea, and I, and I put it like this, it's like taking seeds, ideas that's important to us, planting those seeds in our heads and in our hearts, cultivating those ideas throughout the year. So throughout the year, we're practicing unity. Throughout the year, we are practicing self-determination. Throughout the year, we are practicing faith. So at the end of the year, we come together to have this great harvest, meaning that mm. now we can look back and say, you know what, we practice unity and you see what we was able to accomplish? We yeah. practice faith and do you see what we was able to achieve? Now we get a chance to sit back and celebrate ourselves based upon these principles that we have practiced throughout the year. And of course, then we get a chance to go back and replant them, meaning that we have to go back and cultivate them <laughs> exactly. continuously again. So the idea with the Kwanzaa celebration, I think is a, it's an amazing celebration. And I was first introduced to the Kwanzaa celebration and first celebrated in 1989. Mm -hmm. And ever since that time, I have celebrated Kwanzaa with the family and community. We've had Kwanzaa workshops. We've had, of course, the Kwanzaa Market Festival. We have a Kwanzaa celebration. And we will have a community celebration. I mentioned that. And on December the 30th, at the market, we're going to have a Kwanzaa celebration. So we invite the community to come out for that event because we're going to go through the whole ceremony and then we're going to break bread, have some food. So we invite yeah. people to come out for that, you know. But the idea is that it's an amazing celebration. It has really impacted my life and the life of my family and the life of this community in many ways. And I just we want to just share this celebration with other people. And, of course, want to uh, share this great date. Uh, you know, with the Kwanzaa Market Festival. So we're just trying to build on something. Man, I just saying, um, you answer a question I was going to ask. You already answered. I said, so what are you doing for Kwanzaa? Yeah. And you just said on, on December 30th, mm -hmm. uh, make sure I get some information about that so I start talking about it That's tomorrow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Sharon's on. She's on the horn right now. Sharon, can you yeah. give me that information? I would appreciate it. But going through it but we have to we have to tap one resource mm -hmm. and it's generation z i'm gonna say y'all kids we got to get a hold of them to get them to understand what's going on they're they're in this material world right now that they think oh i'll get to it when i can and no you need to get to it now i was always told it's no time better than the present that, I agree with you a thousand percent, brother. So, you know, the thing that we've always tried to uh, center ourselves around the Kwanzaa celebration is to bring young people into the celebration. Because I'm one of the firm believers that if you introduce young people to something at an early age and you can show them the importance of it and the joy of it, then they will want to celebrate it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, years ago, we used to have a Kwanzaa celebration where we would have all the children come together and we would have this amazing meal. We would dance. We would, you know, and then we would give zawadis or gifts to the children. Well, these children, from this experience, they, can't, they became aware of the importance of Kwanzaa, but they came to looking forward to celebrating Kwanzaa every year. So you would, you know, talk about the principles throughout the year, but then they would be, well, when are we going to have the Kwanzaa celebration? Yeah. And the idea is that we have to introduce young people to principles. And that's the real important things. Is that the principles of Kwanzaa is the principles of values and ideas that will empower all of us. I mean, you just spoke of the materialism. I think, you know, we're material people. But materialism is when you go excessive, yeah. you know. The idea is that we have to understand that it's more to this world than just a material world. We are spiritual people, we're intellectual people, and we have to see the overall value of us as a people and cultivate all those things. And I think those seven principles of Kwanzaa 
help us to cultivate the best of us, not just creating a material world, but creating a world where we share the best, you know, we share kindness, we, we share good thoughts, we share positivity. Uh, the principle of unity, if you're gonna unify with someone, the first thing you're gonna, you got to do is what? You got to at least be kind to them. You got to talk <laughs> yeah. to them respectfully right. if you're going to unify with them. And if you're going to, you know, practice self-determination, meaning that you're going to practice doing for yourself all you can do and be the best that you can be, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the young people, you know, I think if they understand that, yeah, we want you to be the best you can be. We want you to be determined, you know. Yeah. And the idea we go through each principle looking at that looking at our purpose. What is your purpose? The purpose is not just to be here and get all the material things because once you're gone, the material things will be nope. sti still here. Exactly. But what is, would be your legacy? What will you bring and give to humanity your yeah. purpose? But I'm sorry, brother, you know, we... No, 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 that's all right, uh, Sharon. She just replied and gave me the flyer for what's going on in 30th. Okay. Um, one thing when you brought that up, Mm -hmm. um, the kids look forward to it. Yes, sir. Um, that's that word my grandma used to use called tradition. Beautiful. She used that word tradition. Why do we do this? It's tradition. This is why we do this every year. It has something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. But in between there, she said, why is tradition? We should be teaching throughout the year to lead up to that tradition. That's right. And that's where some way we we'll do it right now. Forget about it for a whole year. And then we're fighting around for two days before it even starts to get brushed up on everything. When we should do something throughout the year. I agree with you, brother. And I think that's very insightful. Because Kwanzaa really is a tradition. It's building a tradition for our family and our community. Just like any, many other things that we do. You know, we talked earlier about just having family reunions. That was part of our tradition. That's needs to be a part of our tradition coming together as a family you know but with kwanzaa i see it again as part of our family tradition it's something that i look forward to every year but the thing that you said that was most important to me was that it was not something that we just bring out once a year we raise it up and then we put it back in a box you know and never think of it or speak of it until that following year the thing that is important about Kwanzaa is that we take these principles and we apply them throughout the year. We have uh, worked with youth and the youth of our program have been introduced to these principles. When we have our Kwanzaa, uh, well, when we have our Buy Black Market on Saturday, we make people aware the principle that we are incorporate within this Buy Black Market is the principle of unity and cooperative economics. We have programs throughout the year. And each time we want to make people aware that this celebration or this gathering is centered around these principles. So what I'm saying and what you're saying, and if I understand you correctly, brother, is that it's part of the tradition that we practice throughout the year. Yes. It's not something we just pull out once a year. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the important thing about the Kwanzaa celebration is that these are principles that you can practice throughout the year and that's the important thing i, I got one to throw on you about the principles yes sir um just going through my head right now is six principles why don't we practice one principle every two months that way we'll lead up to two. kwanzaa and we have every and just write down what you're doing mm -hmm. for the first two months and the second two months and going forth that that's just that's what I'm going to start doing yeah. now. So I just thought yeah. of it. I said, hey, that wouldn't be a bad idea to have that. I think that's a great idea, brother. That's a great idea because as we're having this conversation, now you got me, you know, <laughs> we, we got to get together more often, brother. <laughs> but the idea is that we can take the principle. I'm going to tell you, at one time, my thinking was that we would have a, we would take the days of the week and rename them after the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So like Sunday would be Imani Day. Yeah. Monday would be Umoja, Unity Day. <laughs> and we would go through the week. But the point of it is that we would be reminded of these principles every day 
through just acknowledging the days of the week, what you just made a point of, if we just take these principles, and now you got me thinking, because working with the young people, that may be a way to really build on these principles. Mm -hmm. And that is to say, look here, the first month of the year, we're going to focus on the principle of unity. The second month, we're going to focus on the principle of self-determination. Uh, taking two principles, as you indicated, but making sure that we continue to acknowledge these principles, engage in how we, could, how we are practicing these principles. And it may yeah. just be a matter of bringing young people together and saying, look, what have you done to show unity this year, uh, mm -hmm. this month? Or what have you done to really express your self-determination this month? Yeah. What have you done? Uh, it was a mate. We, uh, we had the, the Buy Black Market. And my grandson, he's seven now, just had his birthday. Well, he came out and they set up a lemonade stand to sell lemonade. Well, the people came in and they was just, I think, overwhelmed and joyful that they had, we had this little young man, this little <laughs> young brother, <laughs> selling this lemonade, practicing, you know, business aspects of creating something and offering it to our community. Yeah. Now, I remind him, you know, that, look, this is one of the principles that we talk about, and that is sharing our resources, being determined and engaging and talking with people. And for that day, he had to go around asking people and talking with people, you know, because sometimes he can be a little shy, but the idea is that he was willing to do that. Yeah. The point is, is that imagine if we had more opportunities for our young people yes. to create and set up markets and set up opportunities for them to express these principles in a way and show our community how valuable these principles are when they are in practice. Right. Oh, I agree with you 110% on that one because our youth is our future. No doubt. I'm just going to no go ahead and say that like yeah. it is. Uh, the yeah. youth, it, um, we got to reach them. And mm -hmm. there's a way of reaching them. I mean, I had a young lady on the show that started a bakery business during the pandemic. She's a sophomore in high school, Beautiful. started a bakery business, and she's doing very well. That's and that's what we need, because, you know, you mentioned some earlier. You said you have a karaoke mm -hmm. with the children. I think we just need to have more places and spaces where we can have young people and highlight them. So one thing I want you to, you got to share the information about this young lady that's with the bakery now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we can reach out to her at some point. All right. But the idea is that maybe it's something that we really need to have a greater discussion and center a community discussion around how can we get our young people to uh, take their talents, their gifts, uh, their interests, and then present that to the community and yes. support them. And, and we definitely need to do that. I'll tell you, I'm just, I'm getting hyped right now. <laughs> <laughs> because my deal is um, I'm a sucker when it comes down to kids. I mean, if somebody knock on the door and say, Ron, mm -hmm. we can't pay you anything, but can you come do this for the children? I'm there. I'm, I'm with there. you, brother. I mean, um, money is not everything. And even though I wish I had a lot more than what I had, but yeah. I'm fulfilled with doing things for people. That's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm a, um, somebody got on my case, not a good way, said, Ron, you, has always, you have always been a giver. I never hear you asking for anything. Mm -hmm but you're the first one in line to give something. I say, well, I guess that's how I was brought up. You know, Ron, I think we need to, uh, we need to talk, have greater, more conversations about what you just said, because I think many times there are people doing a lot more good in our community than we are aware of. Mm -hmm. And I think the basic principles and I see the basic principle in what you're saying is that it's a principle called uh, reciprocity. You give back to those who have given to you. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine you had elders, you had your parents, you had family members and community uh, members that poured into you. Now you have a responsibility to give back to those who are in need, especially our young people. Yes. 
I think that we need to have more acknowledgement of people who are giving back. You know, I think sometimes we, uh, as media, in the media, we give more attention to uh, things that are distracting, things that do not acknowledge the good that people are doing. Uh, and I think it's an imbalance. So we restore balance and make people aware, you know, there are people like Brother Ron, or there are people like Mama Sharon. There are people in the community who are doing good things in mm -hmm. service to the children, in service to our community. And we need to raise them up as much as we may raise up somebody who uh, has a lot of resources, money, but maybe yeah. not be as giving. <laughs> All right, got you. <laughs> yeah, but you know, um, this is um, baby steps we're taking out. I okay. didn't, I didn't know who you, I didn't know who you were until Sharon told me about you. See, yes, that's the part of networking we were just talking about. Yes, sir. And, and so she had chimed in uh, one day this week, and I said, "Well, uh, let's get him on the show." And I don't know, it was five minutes or ten minutes later, you had called me. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's a part of i call that invisible networking that's right and it just happened mm -hmm. and that's some of the best things that happened when you just, i remember years ago that um when i was a teenager or, or early adult in my 20s um me and four of my brothers we get together together we did everything great but separate, nothing happened right. So mm -hmm. what I'm getting at is like, if we decide to go out that night, so-and-so mm -hmm. may not have enough money. So-and-so may have this. We will all chip in to make sure everybody had everything equal. Yes. And we will go out and we have a great time. Some of the best times I had when I was broke. Well, I can speak to that too. <laughs> <laughs> I you can know. definitely speak to that. <laughs> yeah. You know. Because many times, Ron, it's not having the money, it's having your brothers and sisters, having people that, uh, that you care about and they care about you. It's yeah. really the sharing of experiences. You know, we was having this conversation recently and we was talking about, of course, we're in the season of giving. Mm -hmm. And many times we go around and we try to find expensive gifts. We try to find those prop items that we say, this is going to just blow people away. Yeah. But what I was, my point was, is that, look here, it's the experiences that we share with people that are most lasting. You know, you, we sometimes give our children a gift, a physical gift, and they play with that for about a week, and next thing you know, it's sitting over in the corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it's the experience when family comes together, or their cousins, and their, you know, their relatives, and they're out there playing with the children, or playing with each other, and they're having this amazing experience as a family. You just spoke of, now see, I can go back and look at how many times we've gone out, me and some of my friends, and we yeah. didn't have too much of anything. But, but what we had was we had each other. And sometimes it was just a matter of sitting there laughing and talking and joking and, and mm -hmm. just having a great experience. And I think that's what we need to refocus ourselves on. And I think that's what Kwanzaa has done for me. It has helped refocus what is really important is not so much the gifts the material things that we give to each other but it's the experiences we share with each other amen to that okay now in closing in closing do you want to share with us anything you got coming up or reiterate things that's going on or what's going on next year because I'm gonna get involved with you after today I'm gonna yes, get sir. involved in what you're doing down there because um sometimes when something comes your way that you don't expect yes sir and something totally different just blows your mind and what you are saying about the books Kwanzaa the mark you have every every weekend I mean brother you're doing everything out there that 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 um some people expect or not expect mm -hmm. I did not expect on what you have going on out there until I met you today. And, 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 I, and, and thank you, Sharon, mm -hmm. for introducing me to this young man because uh, now um, we're gonna start doing things together. I look forward to that, brother, I really do. Because I would love to have you come out at some point to just, if you come to the market just to visit, but if you could even 
and we'll talk about it. Okay. You know. But the idea is that uh, coming up, of course, uh, tomorrow we have the Kwanzaa Market Festival. Uh, again, it's at 3455 Martin Luther King Drive, uh, from time from 12 to 5. We're going to have vendors, we have entertainment, we have food, and we just invite the community to come out and celebrate, learn about Kwanzaa, but also come out to support the vendors, come out to support African American businesses. Uh, of course, we have the Kwanzaa celebration that I mentioned. Actually, we have two. We have on the 27th at the Carver Library, we're going to have a Kwanzaa celebration for children. And that's going to be, I think, the time is at 4 o'clock at the Carver Library. And we get that information to you. Okay. So on the 30th, then, we're going to have a community celebration, uh, the day of the market, the Buy Black Market. And that's going to be, I think, at 2 o'clock. And, of course, we invite the community to come out. That will be part of our celebration where we have our ceremony. But also, we'll break bread, like I mentioned earlier. We'll sit down and just have a great time in celebrating Kwanzaa. Of course, we're looking forward to the coming year. We have something throughout the year. We have a Black History for Children book giveaway that we do in February. We have that event. We have, uh, of course, in May, we have a Pan-African Cultural Festival. Uh, in October, we have um, a Day of Remembrance of the, those who've come before us. And then we have a Holistic Health Day. And then we have Kwanzaa. And then in between, as you mentioned earlier, brother, we have uh, really the Buy Black Market every Saturday. And at the Buy Black Market, the first Saturday of the month, we have a drum circle, and we're going to build that really around children. We have the djembe, the African drum. You can come out and put your hands on the drum, play the drum. And then the second Saturday, we have poetry and storytelling with our brother, brother Mandrea. Amazing, oh, amazing I've, poet I've and known, storyteller. I've been knowing him for years. So Yes. He, <laughs> so he's out there. Uh, he's with us on uh, the second Saturday. He's there every week, really, yeah. every Saturday. But uh, and then on the third Saturday, we centered around history. And what we like to do is that we take books or we take a video or we take some information we share with the community. It could be local or it could be national, you know. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth Saturday, we focus on health, holistic health. We have Mama O.J. Boomy. She offers alkaline water. So you can come out there, get your jug filled with alkaline water and learn about the benefits of alkaline water. And then, uh, of course, uh, we're always available, brother. You okay. know, you know. And then, uh, actually, and I, I do want to mention this. You know, uh, the for Dream Week, one of the things that we're doing because we have the film company Melanized Medium, and we're going to be having our Black History bus tour uh, on the twenty. I think it's the twenty eighth. It's a Saturday. So for those who are interested in doing the Black History bus tour of San Antonio, where we go to like 15 locations centered on the east side of San Antonio, talk about the history, really talk about the people connected to these locations. So we have that going on also. And we're really excited, brother, because, you know, as always, and I know you look forward to, you know, we have all these ideas and the things that we want to do, but more important, the things that we're already doing and the things that we want to do in the future. And I think we could be more effective when we do them together. So I'm really honored to have this opportunity to meet you because this is the first time, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. just to sit here and have this conversation and have this opportunity to share this information, but also receive information because you, you know, you sparked some ideas that oh. I, I really want to, you know, <laughs> to have further conversation. Okay. But I really appreciate what you're doing, brother, with WSAN. And I think this is, uh, it has become one of our main hubs for information. Okay. So we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that people are aware of what you're doing. All right. I appreciate that.